sick of all this rowing. So am I. Well, can't we just agree to get on? Or you could just agree to the annulment. <laughs> Steve, you are like a stuck record. <laughs> Look, is it really that bad a prospect of staying together? Yep. You were the one that asked me to marry you. You said that you loved me. Yeah, well, that was before I knew what you'd done. You can't stop loving somebody just like that. I didn't love you. What? I never loved you. I just felt sorry for you. Now all the pity's gone, there's nothing left holding us together anymore. No, you're just saying that to hurt me. Mm. I'm saying it because it's the truth. It's Becky I love. I've always loved her. And if I could, I'd be with her now. Times like this, I wish I smoked. Oh, no, every minute feels like an hour. Hmm. Couldn't find me a coffee, could you? Yeah, of course. I'm sure I've seen a machine somewhere. Thanks. Uh, Anne, can I get you anything? Oh, I'd love a cup of tea. Milk, no sugar. Thank you, Sally. It's all right. Go on, then. What? She's gone. Can you tell me about this plan now? You can read me like a book. Mm, one with very large print for the partially sighted. Oh, there's nothing wrong with your eyesight, Mother. No. So, I presume it's about the photos. Yeah. Only thing is, I'm not sure Sally would approve. But I would. Well, you want to prove your son's innocence, don't you? How can I help? I've just had a text from Meredith Maguire. Oh, she wants to see me this afternoon. Why can't she leave you alone? She's the chair of governors. She's a right cow. She thinks Brighton's a rubbish head. Yes, all right, Julie. But well, what's it got to do with her if he is? I'm not. Look, the head's accountable to the governors. Isn't that right, Brian? Mm. Well, he's worried she wants to get rid. She can't be all that bad. Think of your worst nightmare. Trapped in a room with rats. Oh, naked on stage. That's how I do. Mm. Mine's weird. It's like there's all these cubes made of coloured light, and I'm trying to climb up them, and then... Yes, I well, to... time's up by a hundred, and that's Meredith. Don't suppose anyone knows how the trial's going? Oh, no, actually, I was going to ask you. It must be awful for Carla having to relive it all. Yeah, well, we'll see. What do you mean? Well, that's what a trial's for, isn't it? To find out who's telling the truth. Carla is. <laughs> I thought that at first, too, but I'm... I'm not so sure. I mean, Frank does seem like a decent bloke, doesn't he? Lots of apparently decent blokes aren't what they seem. A rapist doesn't walk around with a sign on his forehead, you know. I was just saying. Yeah, well, I believe Carla, and I hope he rots in hell. Ooh! Me too, didn't you? You all right? Yeah. Good. Royston! Oh, oh, Milton! Yeah. <laughs> Ah, Thank you. Uh -huh. And this little lady is? Anna, hiya. This is Milton. He's my... Friend. Yes. Oh, and uh, this this is Owen. He's Anna's... Friend. Oh, yes. Well, hi, Roy. Uh, so this is your diner, huh? Cafe. Cafe? Oh, that's quaint. That's very quaint. There's sort of a 70s feeling to it, huh? <laughs> well, I wouldn't really know. Oh, come on now, don't be modest. I mean, these things take a lot of planning, you know. I think it's, it's very retro, huh? Anna, do you have any waffles? Oh, uh, no, well, how sorry. about blueberries and sour cream? Um... Oh, that's why I'm just kidding anyway. I'll have your all-day breakfast. Uh, I don't see why you call it all day, because it's breakfast, you see. At home, we'd call that brunch. But brunch isn't the word, is it? Oh. I mean, you have breakfast and you have lunch. Unless, of course, you include elevenses. Eleven. Roy, Roy, food. Yeah. Well, this is quite... Oh, look at this, formica. Oh, oh, oh. oh how cute that is, yes. <laughs> Here, now, let's sit down, oh. all right? Thank you, my dear. Hey, you never said your mum were going out with an American. She's not going out with him. Americans are very tactile, unfortunately. What happened when you went round to Frank Foster's house that night? Well, we discussed the order, and then after dinner I asked him if we had a deal. He said that he hadn't decided yet, and then he suddenly tried to kiss me. I was really shocked. What happened next? 
I asked him what he was doing, and then he tried to kiss me again. So I pushed him off and told him to stop it and reminded him that I had a boyfriend. And he said that he wasn't looking for a relationship, just a bit of fun. I told him I wasn't and that I was going. And did he let you go? No. No, I tried to get up and then he started trying to kiss me again. I was really scared. I told him to get off me, but he wouldn't listen. And then he grabbed me and pushed me onto the couch. And, and then he... He would. He started trying to put his hand up under my dress. And anyway, somehow I managed to get my knee up and shove him off me. And what did you do then? I got up and ran. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. I just thought I'd pop in, see if you want me to pick Amy up later. No, it's all right, I'll do it. You okay? Oh, Tracy, what's happened? It's Steve. He hates me. No, he's just angry enough. That'll fade in time. No. He said he's never loved me. That he only married me because he felt sorry for me. Oh, sweetheart. What was your employment prior to working at Underworld? I was a hairdresser. And you had no previous business experience? No. In fact, you'd only been at the factory a week, hadn't you, before the meeting in question? Yeah, roughly. Yet it was you, an unqualified, inexperienced employee, who was sent round to Mr Foster's on your own to negotiate an important business deal. Well, no, Carla had loads of work on, and anyway, I was only dropping a sample. But you did discuss the deal with him? Well, yeah, in the end. Can you describe what you were wearing the night you went round to Mr Foster's? I don't see what that's got to do with anything. It was a short, low-cut dress, wasn't it? Oh, and that's an invitation to try and rape me, is it? No, but it might mean you wanted him to find you attractive. It might even mean you found him attractive. No, I didn't. I... Would you say it's necessary to dress like that for a business meeting? Well, no, but... You were drinking that night, weren't you? Yeah, but so was he. And where were you when Mr Foster tried to kiss you? On the couch. On the couch! Right! And is that normally where you would conduct a business meeting? Look, I don't know what you're trying to say here, but... And what did you do after he tried to kiss you? He tried to do a little bit more than that. Answer the question, please. I went home. You didn't ring the police. Why? Because I just didn't feel up to going through everything. Did you tell Carla Connor what had happened? Yeah. But you both decided to go ahead and enter into a business deal with Mr Foster anyway. Look, we didn't want you, but we were desperate and we needed the business. You did, didn't you? Which is why Carla Connor had sent you round on your own, dressed in that manner, in the hope that you could seduce Mr Foster into signing the contract. No, that's not true. When I... you saw Mr Foster the next day, did he deny he tried to kiss you? No. In fact, he apologised, didn't he? Yeah, he did, but... He admitted he'd probably misunderstood the situation. He didn't misunderstand anything. No means no. So why a couple of weeks later did you apologise to him? He was going to cancel the order. You apologised for having said he'd tried to rape you, and you admitted you'd probably both misread the situation. Yeah, but I didn't mean it. But clearly not. Because a month later, six whole weeks after it had supposedly happened, you finally decided you'd report the attempted rape to the police after all. And what made you decide to do it then? I just thought that you shouldn't be getting away with it. Oh, so it had nothing to do with the fact that you and Carla Connor had fallen out when she decided to make Mr Foster her business partner? You're trying to make this sound like sour grapes now. It wasn't. Did the police arrest him? No. And why was that? Because they said that there wasn't any evidence. No further questions, Your Honour. Well, I'm sorry, Meredith, but can I remind you, you are only the Chair of Governors, I am the Head, and this is my school. And I'll appreciate it if you keep your nose out! Meredith, come in, come in, come in. Well, take a seat. Thank you. So, how's the allotment? Thriving. But I'm not here to talk about that. No, no, of course not. Have you given any more thought to what was raised at the Governor's meeting? Absolutely. 
And? Well, I'm still thinking about it. Brian, we've got Ofsted this year, and you don't seem to have put into practice any of the improvements that were suggested from the last Ofsted. Uh, but to be fair, Meredith, I wasn't the head then. As you keep saying, but you are now. And time's running out. Top of the agenda is the school's dismal SATS results. Academic achievement's only one feather in a school's cap, isn't it? Surely the children's happiness and well-being must come first. If that were the case, we could just have a playground. Forget about the school. Well, there's something to be said for learning through play. <laughs> uh, but you're right. It does need addressing. So, do you have a plan? I have several plans. Which are? Well, I thought we could discuss them at the next governor's meeting, give everyone else a chance to have their say. Fine. But they'd better be good. All the governors are baying for your blood, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Pure cab, you left to wait, they're all out. I don't want a cab. Oh, why am I not surprised? I've just been round to see Tracy. Oh, hatching up another little plan, are you? What is it this time? Another miraculous pregnancy again. She's in bits. Oh, my heart bleeds. Look, I don't care what you think of her or of me, but she did lose those babies and she's never got over that. Yeah, she was so grief-stricken, she found time to frame Becky for it. She did that because she was scared of losing you. She could see you were being drawn back to Becky and, and she panicked. Well, she should have just told me the truth. Yeah, you would have thrown her aside and gone back to Becky. Whereas she genuinely does love you. Which is why she's putting up with all this flat from you now. You expect me to just forget about what she did? No, I... I just want you to try and find a way through all this. If not for Tracy's sake, then for Amy's. There is no way through all this. The whole thing's a mess. Do you know why I kept Tracy's secret? Because she's my child. And when your child needs help, you don't even think about it. You just do what it takes. So get your act together, Steve. Because it's Amy who's the real casualty in all this. What is your relationship with Carla Connor? Oh, we're uh, friends. Do you see each other much? Yes, uh... Carla had a, a drink problem. And I'm in recovery, you know, a, a recovering alcoholic, so I was trying to help her through that. Did you see Frank Foster on the day of the alleged rape? Yes, I did. He came storming out of the factory and he was very angry. He got in his car and he drove off fast. What did you do? I went across to the factory to see if Carla was okay. But she wasn't. She was, she was very upset. Did she say why? She said that she'd just split with Frank. And, and, and this was the first you knew of it? It was, yes. After the alleged rape, did you see Frank Foster again? Yes, I did the next day. Did the two of you speak? Yes. What did he say? He said he'd given her what she deserved. She being Carla Connor? Yes. Did he say anything else? Yes, he said she... <clears throat> Sorry. He said she likes it rough, so that's why I gave her. Uh, what the heck are you doing? Uh, I thought I'd fix the door for your mum. Oh, did you? Well, I said I'd do it. Yeah, I know, but you're busy, so... Well, it doesn't matter. It's not your place. OK, I'll, uh, I'll put it back up. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll do it now it's off. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to tread on anyone's toes or anything. You're never going to like me, are you? I'm never going to trust you. I've been married for 23 years. Me and Leslie, we met at school, love at first sight. Used to get skitted by my mates for holding hand, never bothered me. Sometimes you meet somebody and that's it, you don't need anybody else. She was my lover, my best friend and my wife. And I really, really miss her. Yeah, well, she's still your wife, isn't she? Amy, 
I'm really sorry, but Daddy's not going to be... Daddy! Hey, 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 hey. You all right, Angel? Yeah, we're having sausage and bean casserole for tea. Hooray! Can't wait. You OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Can you wash your hands? Yeah, how are you? Yeah. That'll do. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is nice, isn't it? All of us together. Yeah, I can't stay long because I've got stuff to sort out, so... No, no, that's fine. It's just nice that you could have your tea with us. Yeah. When Mr Foster made this alleged confession, how did you react? Well, obviously, I was angry. I asked how you reacted, not how you felt. I hit him. It was a little more than that, wasn't it? You hit him several times. Yes. In fact, your own wife was there, begging you to stop, but you didn't. You carried on hitting him and had to be pulled off by the police, who arrested you for assault. Yes, because I was angry because of the things that he'd said. Did anyone else hear this supposed confession? No. So we just have your word for it that he said all those things? Well, yes, but he Therefore, did say all... your attack may have been unprovoked. No. It may have just seemed the perfect opportunity to pretend that Mr Foster had confessed and to beat him up. No. Because you no. never liked him being with Carla Connor. No, no, that... that's rubbish. You got a hand? Yeah, go on then. Just pull the door towards me. That's it. That's it. No, no, too much. Got it? Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. What you said before, you're right. Leslie is still my wife. But it's like she's walking away from me, Chase. And no matter how many times I call after her, she doesn't turn around. I never... I never intended on falling for your mum. She never intended on falling for me, but I'm glad she did. I feel blessed. And I will not let her down, I promise you. I will not let either of them down. I may have done it. Yeah, it didn't take long. Right, uh, I'm off for the shower. You got any biscuits? I'm ten on worktop. Thanks for the help. Anytime. Something happened between you two? Not a lot, but I don't know. Maybe it's a start. <laughs> I take it it didn't go well. Well, she's done about the poor SATS results. I told her I had various plans and we could discuss them at the governor's meeting. Good for you. No, it's not good for me at all, because I, I haven't got any plans. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something. I'm going to have to, because if I don't, I'm for the chop. I know it. Thanks, love. It's a trial today, isn't it? Yep. And if there's any justice in this world, it'll be locked up by the end of it. Oh, I hope so. You know, whenever I hear about something like that, I always think it could be an Arcadia, is he? Never mind about being locked up. He should be put down. Cheers, love. You know, Roy is a great cook. Well, he takes after his mother. <laughs> and that place of his it has loads of potential. Really? Well, I started out small, and now I've got an empire, so they say. I mean, Roy could do the same. Yes, but Roy's hardly cut from the same cloth as you. I mean, he's hardly an entrepreneur. Bah, anybody can be an entrepreneur. All you need is a little guidance from someone who's been there. Hmm? <laughs> all right. I'm going to chew on a few ideas, and I'll talk with them tomorrow, all right? To Roy. To Roy! <laughs> <sighs> oh, Wayne. <laughs> Same again. What are you after? Nothing. Go on, then. Thanks. Right. I'll have a pint in hotel. OK. So... Busy these days. <laughs> I knew it. What do you want? Job doing, seeing us. No chance. I'm snowed under, mate. Although, uh, I might be able to squeeze you in, you know, for a price. Done. Ah. So what's so urgent that you're not even going to have, eh? You said the next time you saw Mr Foster after he left the factory was when he made his so-called confession? Yes. But uh, you actually saw him the night of the alleged rape, didn't you, when you went round to Carla Connor's flat? Yes, I did, of course. I'm sorry. Yeah. Why did you go round there that night? I heard Maria telling her brother that she was on her way around to Carla's because she said that something had happened. So you went round there too? Why? Well, like I said, you know, I was concerned for her. Yeah. She's a friend. Nevertheless, it was rather extreme, wasn't it? Going all the way around to her flat when you already knew another friend had gone to her aid? I was worried about her, and I knew how angry Frank was earlier. Or you wanted to check everything had gone according to plan. 
which was that Carla Connor would falsely accuse Mr. Foster of rape. No. You were in a relationship with Carla Connor, weren't you? You still are. That's ridiculous. Look, the only reason that me and Carla were close is because I told you I was trying to help her through a drink problem. That may have been what brought you together, but isn't it true that this friendship then developed into a relationship? No. Even your wife thought you were in a relationship. That was nonsense, and Leanne knows that now. Except you were lying all along. You both were. Order! Why else would you be kissing us? Sit down, or you'll have to leave the court. Members of the jury, you will disregard the outburst from the gallery. Carry on, please. Let me repeat the question. And may I remind you, you are still under oath. Are you in a relationship with Carla Connor? Like I said, when Carla was raped, we were Are you friends. in a relationship with Carla Connor? Yes. If you have been affected by tonight's episode, you can contact Rape Crisis on 0808 802 9999. Calls are free from UK landlines and major mobile providers. Or you can visit www.rapecrisis.org.uk. Thank you.